I bought just about every single Chanel Beauty launch in 2022, and today I'm going to share the best and the worst products. Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Erin and I review luxury beauty and fragrance. You can say that my niche would be luxury, but I also like to talk about quality over quantity and really curating the perfect luxury beauty collection. So it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, that nobody needs to purchase every single makeup launch from any beauty brand. I've purchased all of these products myself. Now, one of the benefits to purchasing so much from Chanel every year is that it gives me a broader perspective. So not only am I sharing individual product reviews, but I can also compare this year's summer collection to last year's. I have a better understanding of the quality we should expect from Chanel quality, packaging, the designs, the inspiration, the different stories that they tie into each collection every year, the price versus the amount of product that we should expect. So I take all of this into consideration when choosing my favorites and my least favorites. It was no small feat, by the way, to pull out all of the Chanel products that I purchased just this year alone, but I'm pretty sure I nabbed everything. I even had to dig into my empties bin for a few of these things. When I say I purchased most everything, I've purchased something from every collection, but I skipped out on quite a few lipsticks this year, but that's about it. And I laid out everything on the vanity behind me in the order in which it was launched. So for no other reason than it kind of gives the video a little organization, I am going to begin with the spring summer collection. That's when we saw the launch of this 747 Mediterranean eyeshadow palette, and this has been one of my favorite launches of the year. It's very simple, it's very standard, but I think this could be the perfect everyday eyeshadow palette. It's just effortless and flattering, and this is really true to the makeup style of Chanel. So is this going to blow your world? Absolutely not, but I will say this has been so popular. I think this sold out right away. All four shadows in the palette are metallic. They're a bit on the drier side, but they still give really great pigmentation. Now, what I like so much about this particular color story is that it leans a little bit more neutral to cool. A lot of neutral eyeshadow palettes from Chanel are so warm and brassy, so they gave us something different with this collection. And I just think it's, again, an effortless everyday palette. And I think that's the beauty of quads is that they don't have to be overly complicated. You open them up, you know exactly what to do with it. It's very intuitive. In the same collection, we also got the Rouge Coco Balm lipsticks. This is shade 914 Natural Charm. I picked up three, and this is the one that I've worn the most. I think all of them are really pretty. It's a lip balm, but it actually gives pretty decent color payoff. I would say this is sort of comparable to the Rouge Coco Flash lipsticks, but it's very hydrating. There's treatment inside here. I really like the white and gold packaging on the Rouge Coco Bombs. It's a nice departure, something different from the traditional black and silver or black and gold. Reminds me a bit of the Tom Ford Sully Blanc packaging, which I always think is their best. It looks very elevated, very sleek and luxurious, and I feel the same way about these Rouge Coco Bombs. So beautiful. One of the biggest launches for Chanel in 2022 was their number one de Chanel collection because it was huge. They basically created an entire new category like Le Lift or Hydra Beauty. So we have number one de Chanel skincare, but then they also launched some makeup products. I picked up just about everything. A few items I'm not talking about in my favorites. I like everything that I've tried. I just wouldn't say it was one of the best launches of 2022. Now, the number one de Chanel foundation I'm wearing this today, I think is really beautiful. If I compare this with all of the other Chanel foundations, which that video is coming soon, I'm not sure I see a huge void or a need for this foundation, but I do think it has a place. It has skincare ingredients. It's $70, so it is maybe a half step up price point wise from the normal foundations, not quite sublimage. So it's a less expensive skincare option for those people who really want treatment in their products. It has a luminous finish and buildable coverage, so it can be very light, but you can also build it up and layer if you want more of a soft glam, everyday makeup look. I think it's a beautiful foundation. This is a product I've been grabbing a lot lately. It's the number one de Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Lip and Cheek Balm. I believe I bought two shades. This is the only one I could locate, and it's the shade 2, Healthy Pink, which I think sold out for a long time. You can see my little 
nail scrape marks in there. It's gross, I know, but I do have a long pinky nail and that's what I've been using to scoop out the product. I hate a little pot like this. That's my one complaint about it, but it's kind of nice. You can use it on the cheeks, the lips. You could use a little bit on the eyes if you wanted to. It's a very versatile, no makeup makeup product, but I've been using this on the lips and I think it looks so beautiful. This would be a great everyday lip as well. It's kind of the pot version of the Rouge Coco Balm. And you know what it is? The reason I love this so much and why I would even talk about it in a favorite since I don't really love the pot, it's the color. It is the perfect color. And a lipstick in this color wouldn't look the same on the lips. It has something to do with the texture and just the opacity, is that a word? It's opaque, but it's not. So it truly does look like your lips, but better. And I've only been able to achieve that particular lip with this. For skincare from the line, I picked up the serum spray, which I really like, and the eye cream. Again, I really like it. I wouldn't say it's my all-time favorite. I probably need to use those a little bit more, but this I fished out of the empties bin because I used it completely up. I scraped every last bit of the jar and now I'm gonna keep it in the empties until my video and then I will just recycle this because it's a refillable jar, which I think is really nice. So this is the Red Camellia Revitalizing Cream. It smelled very nice, light, fresh. I think it felt very hydrating on the skin. Might be something that I replace. I haven't decided yet. I have several moisturizers that I would like to go through first. I would say this is a daytime moisturizer. This is not heavy enough for evenings. And I don't like something that's too thick and rich and heavy, but I think once you have reached the age when you are looking for something with treatment that's anti-aging, this just isn't going to cut it for evenings. So for a day cream, I do think it is really beautiful which is why it is one of my favorites. Here is one of my all-time favorite Chanel launches of 2022. If I had to narrow down this list to maybe a top 10 or a top five, the Camellia highlighter would be on that list. This is the Rev de Camellia Illuminating Powder. It is so beautiful. It's so gorgeous in person that I purchased a backup and I actually have it stored in my vanity with a few other pieces that I don't touch. They're just for photographs or for nostalgia, more collector's item. But this one, of course, I had to destroy and use because it's so pretty. And it looks like a very boring, fleshy, peachy Chanel highlighter, but it has a translucent finish. I don't know how to describe it. I feel like it looks like my skin. Like my skin is just naturally wet. It does not look powdery. It does not look light and pearly like some of the other highlighters that I have. There's something about it. I don't know how to explain it. It's sheer and yet it's very blinding. I have it on my cheeks today. Such a beautiful highlight. And of course, I love anytime Chanel comes out with these really pretty special limited edition items where they really go all out with the embossing and the details. So it did have a little CC in the middle and even the camellia itself had almost a texture to it. It was so nice. So I love these pieces. It's a collector's item. Is it an essential? No, absolutely not. But is it one of the most beautiful launches this year from Chanel? Absolutely. And I don't think anyone would argue there. So this highlighter was part of the LeBlanc collection, which we usually get around springtime. And I also pulled out this eyeshadow palette from LeBlanc this year. I wouldn't say this is one of my all-time favorite Chanel eyeshadow palettes, but it is one of my favorites of the year because it's so different. Usually with LeBlanc, it's a very specific look. And the colors are usually pinks and purples, which makes sense because it launches during spring. But this was more of a warm kind of peachy neutral tone. I really like that they went in a different direction. They surprised me with the LeBlanc collection this year, which is usually not one of my favorites. I find myself regularly underwhelmed by LeBlanc, but I think these colors are very wearable. It's a bit more unique and they went with a different formula. So I think this palette was really nice. I also picked up these lipsticks from the LeBlanc collection. I pulled them out just to show you. I wouldn't say these were really memorable pieces for me. I'm still happy that I have them. I like them, no complaints, but not best of the year. This nail polish, on the other hand, I had to dig out of the empties bin. I used the entire thing and it did not take me very long at all. 
Now I had to do two or three coats every single time I painted my nails because this was more of, what do you call it? Maybe a jelly bean nail polish? Somebody explained to me in the comments of one of my videos that this was the look. It was meant to be a bit more sheer. I'm so used to opaque nail polishes, but I love this color. It's 921 Evanescence. I believe this is sold out. I think it was limited edition for that collection, which is unfortunate because I thought it was so pretty. I love this shade of pink. It's slightly purple. It's kind of a violety pink. So if you watch my videos during the spring this year, I was always wearing this nail polish. I was very lucky this year. I just happened to be in London when they launched the Le Beige Summer Collection, which launched a couple weeks early in the UK. So I was able to get my hands on these pieces from Selfridges, which in, uh, in and of itself was the most magical shopping experience. It was my first time ever in Selfridges. So to be able to wander around, walk through the Chanel counter and pick up the new collection was just so special. I'll remember it for the rest of my life. The Le Beige Summer Collection is one that I always look forward to every single year. These are always some of my favorite pieces. I don't know what it is about it. I think I just love the summer months in general. They usually come out with really pretty, very light bronze goddessy makeup, a lot of bronzers and just stunning pieces. And I love the oversized compact. I know some people don't really like it because I guess it's maybe not as portable, not as easy. To me, this looks so luxurious. It is just, wow, it's a statement piece. And the bronzers are always incredible, but this with the little Le Beige compacts, amazing in my book. Technically, this is not a bronzer. It is the oversized Healthy Glow Sun Kissed Powder, but all of the shades are bronzer shades, and then they do have a little bit of a champagne gold sheen that's so pretty. I have the shade Sun Kissed Medium. On me, this works perfectly as a bronzer, or if I decide to go in with my cream bronzer, the Le Beige Bronzing Cream, I can always dust a little bit of this on top just to kind of set the color, and it's absolutely beautiful. They did such a nice job and the Le Beige Compact is one of the classic Chanel beauty items. So I always like when they tie in a story or the history, the heritage of the brand and the Le Beige Compact is really special. I mean, when you think about Chanel beauty, this beige compact is probably one of the products that pops up. It's been around for a really long time. So I love that they even decorated the Le Beige powder with little Le Beige Compacts, so nice. For the second year in a row, they expanded the shade range of this Le Beige Cream Bronzer. This is the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. They came out with shade 392, Soleil Tan Medium Bronze, which I love because I do think this is a little bit deeper than the original 390. Well, I say original because it used to be just one shade, Soleil Tan de Chanel, and that equivalent is shade 390. Then they launched 395 last year, which is much deeper. It has more of a red undertone. This is more of a brownie undertone. So I think some people will really prefer this to the 390. However, it's a love-hate relationship with this bronzer because I don't think this was necessary. I think they really needed something deeper than 395 before this one. Right now they have two not so extreme polar opposites in the 390 and the 395. And instead of filling in the middle, they really need to go deeper and deeper because even I can make 395 work for me. If I sheer it out a bit, it works. I mean, it's fine. If your deepest bronzer shade can still work on me, that's a problem. So I do really like this color, but I wish they had gone with something darker. It was a pretty small collection this year. They came out with three shades of the bronzer, the cream bronzer, there was a jumbo powder brush, which I also picked up and I love, and then this illuminating oil for face, body, and hair. <gasps> a dream. I absolutely love this. It is so thin and it leaves just a little color and a little sheen to the skin and I think it's so beautiful. The smell, it smells kind of like Le Beige. It's just nice. It's fresh. And I like that in the demonstrations, they've been showing this all three ways. I see them applying a little bit on the face, like integrating it with the makeup, also in the hair and the body. I've only used this on the body. It's such a special item because this is not something that they come out with every single year. It is truly a limited edition, 
one time only. Will there be something similar at some point? I'm sure down the road maybe, but I absolutely love it and I know this did sell out really quickly. Another one of the most popular, highly anticipated launches this year was the expansion of the Waterfresh collection. So we got shades of the Waterfresh blush. I picked up three, as well as this newly beige Waterfresh complexion touch, which a lot of people have been referring to as a concealer for the Waterfresh tint. And that's kind of the way it was explained to me in store, so I can see why people say this is a concealer. I use this all over my face as my my foundation, my complexion product. You don't need a ton of product, so it's okay that it's a smaller bottle. I like that it's portable. It's perfect for vacations, the beach, the pool, no makeup makeup days when you're just running out the door, just to even out your skin tone a little bit. I still really like my water fresh tint. However, it's so light that if you have, unless you have perfect model skin, it's not really going to even out your skin tone that much. If you have any redness on your cheek, like I have a little rosacea, I have some post blemish marks still, some freckles. So I like that this still looks like my skin. It still looks very natural, but it does a much better job in my opinion, just evening everything out so that it does give you that boost of confidence to walk out the door as if you have nothing on. And it's kind of like, shh, our little secret. <laughs> I've had a bit of a change of heart with these Waterfresh blushes. At first, because I picked up three shades, I was a little bit disappointed in the lack of pigment. The only one that is really bold is the Intense Coral. However, I'm wearing this one today, it's light pink, and I've been wearing this more and more just to kind of force myself to really use it. And now I really like it. It is the perfect blush for anybody who's very minimal, who still wants to see their skin on a regular basis. But even when I incorporate this into a full makeup look and I do my usual soft glam, I can still see this on my skin. At first I thought I wouldn't really love it because it was maybe too light. I don't feel that way anymore. I think it looks really beautiful and now I'm getting more use out of all three of my shades. For fall, this year Chanel gave us nudes, the entire spectrum of nudes, which a lot of people might find to be very basic and boring, as boring as you can get. I think there's a little context missing because a common complaint about Chanel, especially with their lipsticks, has always been they don't have any nudes. They have maybe one or two nudes and then everything else is heavy on the pinks and reds. And I still think that they're very pink red heavy, especially red. We don't really have a lot of berries or mauves. There's still so much room for expansion with Chanel, but I could have talked about all five of my nude nails and nude lipsticks. I picked out three that I really love. 194 is what I'm wearing today. I actually mixed two together. So I kind of mixed 194 and 196, Ademi Mo. I think that one would be my most worn nude. And then I also really like 209 Alter Ego. They are stunning. And I like that they gave us a variety of nudes. There was only one pinky nude and the rest were true brownie nudes. Because again, Chanel rarely does nude, but when they do, it's usually very pink. In this case, they finally gave us some browns and there were 10 shades total. And I love nude nail polishes. I also picked up five. These are two of my favorites, 941 Spontanee and 943 Enigma. I've gotten a lot of use out of both of these and with new nail polishes, especially because I always do my own manicures, I'll use them all up. So I had no problem purchasing five shades. I imagine by this time next year, I'll be done with all five of the ones that I picked up. Potentially the most polarizing Chanel launch of the year. Feels like every year they have some sort of drama. Last year it was the Chanel advent calendar. This year it was the Tweed eyeshadow palettes. These are my two personal favorites of the four. I picked up all four quads. And I actually really like all four. I don't have any real complaints about them except for the price because they were so much more expensive than the usual quad. Are they essential? Absolutely not. But I think if you were a Chanel beauty lover, definitely a Chanel collector, you probably were interested in picking up at least one. You don't need all four, but at least one because they come with these beautiful tweed pouches, which are all handmade and the colors match the eyeshadows inside. So many incredible details. You can read all about them online. 
They were lined as well. I really appreciate any time Chanel Beauty ties in the Chanel Fashion House because Chanel is first and foremost a fashion house, but the beauty se sector has really taken off. And for a lot of people who may never own a Chanel tweed jacket or a tweed skirt or a tweed handbag from Chanel, this is their piece of the brand and piece of the history and the heritage and the significance, whatever that means to you personally. So I really love this idea of the tweed pouches. In the past, they've done tweed blushes, but they never came out with something like this. From what I understand, or the rumor has it, they're coming out with more tweed blushes in the future. And I want to say they're bringing back a few of the old shades that they've already done. I think I have two, tweed beige and tweed pink. They're both really beautiful. I love the little embossing on top of the powder. I'm curious if the new blushes will have a tweed pouch kind of hoping that they don't because the price will then be outrageous. But I think this was such a beautiful detail, one of the most special beauty launches of the year, hands down. And my two favorite quads are 01 Tweed Cure. And I also really like the Brunei Rose. This is what's on my eyes today. Tweed Brunei Rose 04. It's so pretty. It's neutral, but these shades are much cooler in tone, so it pulls a little bit more gray versus orange on the eyes. And I really like the little sparkly pink shade that is so perfect for all over the lid to highlight the inner corner, highlight the brow bone. It's just so beautiful. This is a very elegant eyeshadow quad, in my opinion. We're almost through the end of the year. This next favorite is a product that I swear I have been manifesting for such a long time. They almost got it 100% right. This is the Sublimage Le Corrector Ye. I love this concealer. I'm wearing it today. It's very beautiful on the skin. My only complaint is the jar. I'm not a huge fan of the jar. It feels amazing. It's glass. It looks gorgeous. If all I was going to do was look at it on my vanity, it would be perfection. In practice, however, when you take off the lid, it gets a little bit messy in there. And even around the glass lip here, you can see it gets really messy. So I just find that it's not the most practical packaging. I'm, I understand why they went with the jar. I really love the concealer. I wish they had gone with a pump, especially because one of the selling points and why you're going to pay $100 for a concealer is that it has anti-aging skincare benefits. But if you're constantly opening this up and exposing it to oxygen, a lot of people did say that perhaps this has the preservatives and it's fine. I'm not convinced. I'm not sure whatever skincare is in here, it's going to have that great of an impact when it's constantly being opened. However, I just really like the concealer. I think it's so different from the corrector. So it's nice that they now have another option. I actually think this is a little bit creamier and a bit more full coverage than the original Chanel corrector. And it comes with this little baby brush, which somehow I have managed to not lose. And I actually use this whenever I'm applying it. So I wish I hated it, but I don't. I really like the Chanel corrector. And that brings us to the holiday collection, the last few pieces. I didn't really pull out that many favorites from the holiday collection. I would say my favorite collections every year that I always look out for from Chanel, Les Beige and Holiday. Those would be my personal favorites. I do really like the Jumbo Compact. Again, I really like this highlighter. The tones are a bit deeper this year, so I actually think this works for me better on the body than it does the face. Now, if you have a deeper complexion, then these highlighters will be amazing for your face. This is the Or Rose. I like to dust this all over my shoulders, neck, chest, decollete. I also have the even deeper shade, which again, still works on my body just fine. And I am a highlighter on the body type of person. So anytime I'm going out for the evening, if my shoulders are exposed, I will always apply some highlighter. And I love that it comes in the jumbo compact with the gold CC, signifying it's a holiday collection. And then I also really like these lipsticks that I picked up. I didn't shop for a ton of lipsticks this year, but I went with the 88 Rose Mystere and 89 Rouge Ombre, and both of these are stunning. I just love the Rouge Allure Lac Lipstick Formula. It's very nice. It's a liquid lipstick, but it still maintains a teeny tiny bit of slip. So it's kind of a liquid 
cream lipstick, but it's very long wearing and the shades are beautiful. Perfect for the holidays. 2022 was about all things tweed. So of course I have to mention the holiday gift sets this year because I actually like this bag a little bit better than last year's bag. This one in particular is my favorite. I don't think pictures do it justice. And when I'm looking at the viewfinder, I don't think it does it justice. When you look up close, you can see the individual stitching, the black, the white, the gold. This to me looks so chic and it doesn't necessarily scream holiday. So I think these little travel bags are the best they've maybe ever been. And I also really like the red and gold. This is a little bit more traditional holiday. And the sets they came out with were amazing. Of course, you always have the manicure set, hand cream, lip gloss trio. It wouldn't be Christmas without the lip gloss trio, but they also had the cleanser duo, the glow bronzer set. So really great selection this year. I think these were truly some of the best holiday gift sets I've ever seen from Chanel. I still remember the days when they were in really cheap mesh bags that you couldn't pay to get rid of them. I mean, they would just sit and collect dust until February. <laughs> so a lot has changed since then. Now these are basically gold. We also have some fragrance winners for the year. The Paris Paris fragrance smells incredible. I think they did such a wonderful job creating the Paris. I mean, of all of the cities, Oh, it's so nice. You know Paris had to be special. Reminds me a little bit of Coco Noir Light because it has the rose, the patchouli, and a little citrus, but this is much more of a daytime, spring, outside, fresh, an everyday fragrance. I also have Coco Mademoiselle, the pearly body gel. This is so beautiful. I love Coco Mademoiselle. I love that this has a little sparkle. It's not really oily. So beautiful for layering. This is just one of those special pieces. I think something like this makes an amazing gift during the holidays. If you are still looking for somebody who loves fragrance, every woman wants this. I mean, probably not every woman, but most women I would imagine would be so happy with something like this. And then another really great gift or splurgy self-care item, these bath bombs, the Chanso Tantra scented bath tablets. They smell so nice. It really is an experience whenever you're making a bath with these. One of my favorite things, it's such a small little token, a small thing, a little bath bomb. But if you're having a stressful day or you are just drawing yourself a beautiful bath and you add one of these, it scents the entire bathroom. It does leave a little scent on the skin, but it's more just, I think, the experience of the bath. It's one of those beauty items that you might not always buy for yourself, so I do think it makes a really nice gift for anybody who loves Chance Otandra. I wish these weren't limited edition because they're so cool. There was so much that I loved this year. So many incredible launches but there were also a few items that I didn't really love. The funny thing is people always say, we want you to be honest, influencers are deceiving us, but as soon as you say you don't like something, then I always get comments, it never fails, that I, I did it on purpose, I didn't try hard enough, or I was you know setting the product up for failure for some reason. Absolutely not, I will always only give you my honest opinion whether I purchase the products, whether they're sent to me, whether the video is sponsored or not. You will only always get honesty from me if you feel like I am lying to you and that a product is actually really great that I say is terrible. Please be my guest. Buy five. Go for it. Nobody is stopping you from purchasing these products. It's not to say that they are horrible products. They just didn't work for me and it's something that I regret buying and I wouldn't recommend. I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending them because I didn't like it and that's okay. The first product that I really didn't care for this year is the Stilo Lumiere Regard. They launched two shades, I bought both. This is the multi-use highlighting top coat. And the way this was described to me is that you could use this to highlight the eyes, but I found it to be incredibly irritating. I don't have overly sensitive eyes or skin, but this kind of burned whenever I put it on the eye and I felt like it creased. It kind of ruined anything that I put on top or underneath. It is multi-use, so I imagine I can find some way to use this up so it's not a complete waste. 
kind of think I could maybe mix it into my concealer to add a little glow or maybe just use it as a highlighter right on top of my makeup, but it dries down pretty quickly. So I'm not sure if that's really going to work. It doesn't have a really easy to blend emollient texture. Hopefully I can figure something out so it's not a complete waste of money, but I would say this is one of my regrets for the year. My second least favorite is the Rouge Allure L'Extre lipstick. This is a brand new lipstick formula, which usually really excites me, especially from Chanel. And I really like the shade range of these lipsticks. My problem is that it's refillable, yes, but the amount of product you get for the increased price is insane. This is such a bad value, even for Chanel. I purchased a couple different shades just so I could do the review and share with you, but it's not a lipstick formula I will ever purchase again. And I love the idea of refillable packaging, but this just doesn't feel special. It doesn't look any different than the typical Chanel lipstick case. So I really think they were cutting corners here. My third and final least favorite product, one of the worst launches of the year, is the Rouge Allure Mascara, which I had high hopes for. I wanted to love this mascara, and I had a lot of people fighting with me on this one saying that it wasn't that bad, they didn't have any issue. Hopefully, you won't have an issue if you spend $45 on a mascara, but mine was clumpy right from the start, and I think it might have to do with the packaging. I have a feeling it lets air into the tube, which dries out the mascara, because this was so clumpy even the first time I used it. Not clumpy in that the formula was too gloopy, clumpy in that there were literal clumps in the mascara. So it just looked like little balls on the lashes. I've tried this so many times. I have truly tried to make this work every single time I run into the same issue. It's just not a good mascara. It's not one of the best Chanel mascaras and I would never recommend this to anybody. I think it's terrible. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found it helpful and entertaining to kind of go through and see all of the products launched this year. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I'm curious. Please share in the comments what was your favorite Chanel launch. If you have a favorite or a least favorite, I will take any of your comments down below. I can't wait to read through them and see what you liked and didn't like. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.